Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing a watch that bowed at Basel World 2004. It's one of the boldest and largest modern Patek Philippe complications and it was the introductory platform for the Caliber 324 automatic. This is the Patek Philippe 5135J-0. 001, the Gondolo Annual Calendar. It is a Gondolo Annual Calendar automatic winding in yellow gold. And you can see, it's not just gold, it's bold. This is a large timepiece. Across the case, it's 39.5 millimeters from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, not including the crown. It is a solid 50.7 millimeters across the wrist, and the lugs are pronounced. So you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the watch is almost at its limit. I wouldn't recommend wearing this watch because of the particular shape and plank-like form on a wrist any smaller than and 15 centimeters circumference. It's not thick, however. 11.6 millimeters with a sloped case flank. It will slide underneath the dress cuff. No issues there. And the spacing between the lugs are proportionally broad, 21 millimeters. So Patek was really looking into the future and seeing that broad lug spacings were going to be a hallmark of 21st century watch design. Now you can see that on my wrist, it is a huge watch. And the timepiece is equipped with a strap to match thickly bolstered. There's a lot of alligator leather here. You can see it's a sort of light brown with a bit of a rust red overtone and it, these are medium scale alligator leather components, which is an unusual cut to use. You normally see large scale. It gives it a different look. You also note that there is a shear edge, a very thin shear edge, showing the layers of construction, a monotone stitch, calfskin on the underside. You can see that this is a new Patek Philippe factory strap. There are pull tab spring bars, so you can, with just your fingernails, remove the strap. And then there's a simple polished yellow gold Patek Philippe spade style pin buckle, Patek Philippe branded on the underside. The case is striking, and I do mean striking. Squared off on its ends, it appears to be fluid with compound curves and a sinuous sort of grace about it until you reach the end of the lugs, which are sharply cropped. And that's in tension with the curves, and I think that's an effective piece of design trickery. I think there's a great deal of tension in both the case and the dial of this watch. You've got the tension between the curves of the case and the bezel, and then you've got that hard junction of the bezel with the case top. You've got those squared off lugs on both sides, and you've got the flat plank-like profile of the watch. Now you get into the dial, and it's almost like a magnetic force is drawing the indices inward. Now the watch from the Gondolo collection, which was established in 1993. The watch is designed to evoke Patek Philippe watches of the Art Deco era, so the 1920s and 30s. And back in the day, there were a lot of different schools of thought regarding what modern design should look like, from the Bauhaus to the Deutsche Werkbund to the Futurists to the so-called Art Deco, which was really more of a style than a philosophy. But there were many thoughts about what a machine for living or machines for living should look like. Form follows function sometimes created very sterile, uh, purely utilitarian designs, and sometimes it created machines that were designed to channel the anticipated character of machines. And most pointedly, that means energy, that means dynamism, and animus of their own. And that's why I say it feels like you have this magnetism pulling the indices inboard. It, there's like a pull, a vortex localized to the cannon pinion. So everything on this dial appears to be in tension. Now you have those hard straight lines of the indices and then you have a dial that's actually rounded at its edge and you can see that the inner dial features a curvature, a double curvature with some overlap of the mono counter down at six o'clock. All applique yellow gold indices. You've got a yellow gold frame for the date and only the date to emphasize it up at 12 o'clock. You've got beautifully polished Dauphine style hands and then highly stylized almost Art Nouveau style numerals. Those aren't Art Deco, those are more like Art Nouveau, the predecessor movement. You can also see that the dial is an opaline or matte silver with a slightly different texture on the center dial. At six o'clock you can see there's a moon phase accurate to 122 years, so far more than the annual calendar precision. The watch itself needs to be corrected once a year during the jump from February to March. You'll also note that there's a 24 hour indicator, so you know whether you're looking at AM, PM, here you can clearly see that it is in the 
night or I should say late evening period of the day and that lets you know when not to use the pusher adjusters to try to correct the calendar complication. So now the watch also features the day, the date, and the month, all of it driven by what was then a brand new Patek Philippe Caliber 324 launching back in 2004 on this model. Specifically, this is Caliber 324-205, automatic winding, 35 to 45 hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, adjusted in 5 positions like a chronometer, Geneva Hallmark finish, free sprung balance with Patek Philippe's Gyromax architecture for shock resistance, and for the first time in a Patek automatic Succeeding the bi-directional winding 315, the more efficient 324 winds in only one direction. Now you can see there's an engine turned perlage on the base plate as well as on the center of the rotor. Circular Cote de Genève on the rotor with an engraved Calatrava cross perfectly aligned Cote de Genève across the bridges themselves. You can see the edge of every bridge lighting up that gleaming mirrored englage or chamfer is repeated in every jewel and screw countersink. And you can see that the screw heads themselves are all black polished with chamfered slots and chamfered circumference. The Geneva Hallmark that would continue until mid-2009 in Patek Philippe watches. But it's a nostalgic old look, adjusted in five positions. This is an automatic movement with 34 jewels handsome from any angle if you buy this watch also buy a loop 30 meters water resistant and redolent of the 1920s and 30s regardless of which artistic philosophy is embodied in this watch it's effective a large almost oversized Patek Philippe dress complication see it and make it yours on the watch box